Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Laser Talk. Hello. I hope you have had a great week so far. Um, the weekend is right ahead of us. And so for, for some of you, it's Friday already. Uh, although I look forward to the weekend, the sub but the subject we're talking about tonight isn't um, isn't really a happy one. Uh, but it's it's we're trying to get to the bottom of this impossible question: uh, whether or not Li Keqiang was murdered. There has been so much discussions within the Chinese communities uh, or online Chinese language online communities around the world including China. So what I am going to do tonight is to give you kind of an overview of what people have been talking about and what the expert opinions are. And you can draw your own conclusions. So, you know, if you look at, I mean, Lee died last Thursday, so it's only been a week. When the news of his death first broke out, people were shocked. And this shock turned into questions. And when questions were not answered, they grew into sus um, suspicion, speculation, and even anger. There are many suspicious circumstances surrounding Lee's death, which I discussed in my last live stream, or not, I shouldn't say last, the one last Saturday. And I'm not going to repeat them here. What we're going to focus on is um, we're going. We're going to go one step further. You know, was he murdered? Um, so, when people have so much suspicion and speculations, and when the Beijing authorities don't address them or even become very covert, the majority of the Chinese people don't believe that Li died of heart attack, and they want to know more. So with mounting public suspicions, a CCP member and a former journalist uh, with Xinhua News wrote an open letter to, to the um, CCP leadership. And his name is uh, Gu Wanming. Let me show his picture. There he is. And his open letter asked four things. He's, he asked to want to stop the plan to cremate Li's body and then to thoroughly investigate the incident and all those individuals involved in the case. And then three is to conduct an autopsy and four to give the former premier a proper burial or funeral. And the letter has been circulating for quite a number of days now. And, and, and the, the person even said at the end that if the leader or leaders don't handle this well, it can grow out of proportion. Um, the public suspicion can grow out of proportion unnecessarily. Well, his requests were ignored. Lee's body was cremated today and the evidence or evidences are destroyed. This made people even more suspicious. And according to a survey conducted online on X in Chinese, um, so here's the, here's the survey. So the survey was, um, uh, uh, had four questions. I mean, four scenarios that, um, his death was ordered by Xi Jinping himself, or it was by someone at the very top. It could be someone working for Xi, right? Uh, but not, not Xi himself, or it's by Xi Jinping's political opponent as a setup uh, to, 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 because I, I explained that in my Saturday's live stream that the, the Xi Jinping's opponent has always been trying to uh, turn Xi Jinping against Li Keqiang and vice versa. And then the last scenario is, well, it is due to his health and also the lack of urgent care. And here's the survey re results based on 1,800 um, the survey votes. So the majority of people believe that it was done by Xi Jinping. <laughs> and you see, only 17.5% of the people believe that it was health-related, right? Even, even uh, the 17% believe that there was some kind of negligent, uh, negligent, 
negligence. I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> Anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe I've been reading Chinese too, too, too long today. I forgot how to speak English. All right. Okay. Um, focus. Like, <laughs> so you see only everyone else, right? So uh, 83%. 80, 82% of the people believe that it's a murder or some sort of murder, right? It's only 17% people think it's health related. It was indeed triggered by a health crisis. Um, so, but this survey was conducted on X. So it was done, you know, based on votes by Chinese, mostly Chinese living outside China. So the question is, well, is it representative is it representative of the views held by mainland Chinese? Well, I think it's the survey results are indicative of the public views in mainland China because one, mainland Chinese reacted more to Li's death than Chinese living outside China because Li was their premier, right? And what happened to Li, has a bigger impact on, on the Chinese living in China. And if their thinking is if China's number two guy could, couldn't survive the communist system, and how, how could they, the ordinary people, survive? So they're more likely to question everything. Um, and they're less likely to believe the, uh, the official narratives. So that's that's my reason number one. And number two is overseas Chinese, their view of Li Keqiang um, is more objective and they don't overly praise him as sort of a beacon of hope uh, to reform in, um, to, to, in China. Mainland Chinese have a tendency to, you know, go from, one extreme to another, I mean, in their dire situation, I mean, I'm not blaming them, but that seems to be the case. And they generally sympathize with him more uh, because in that kind of a situation, it's very difficult for them to have an objective view um, when, when you are subject to misinformation, um, you know, censorship and all of that. So emotionally, they they want to see him as a victim um, because he is perceived as the uh, the weak the weaker the weak um, the, the weakest link in the CCP's operation, shall we say? And that's why he's broken. So, so I think this percentage is um, if you, we if we do the same survey in mainland China, it's not anything lower than this. That's my point. So some individuals have disclosed that Lee was murdered and have even identified the killer. And various China experts offer their view on this sensational claim, including a former friend of Li Keqiang and a former friend of Xi Jinping. And one former Chinese forensic scientist made a shocking revelation about a secret agency that Xi Jinping has set up that we're not aware of until now, until he made the disclosure. Uh, we'll, we'll address that today, one by one. Um, so let me first talk about, let me first talk about the, um, uh, the claim. So this claim, um, if you read Chinese, said that the person who killed um, Li Keqiang, his name is Chen Yuan, and this person had previously killed, uh, I think that he was a, a deputy mayor of Shanghai and also the son of a, a CCP party elder, Chen Yi, Chen Xiaolu. And the other two men also died of heart attacks also in Shanghai. So they held this guy by the name of Chen Yuan accountable. And then remember this man who I have featured in my program, one of my programs before. He his name is Zhao Lanjian, and he he is known for his investigative journalism um, on the 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 chained mother of eight in the spring of in the winter of 2022, and he has since fled China and now lives in the United States. 
So he posted something very similar, and he, he even identified the guy. So this is this guy that you're looking at on um, on the right. He is the commander of the Shanghai. What do you say that um, armed police force? Right, armed police force. They're part of the PLA, but it's the armed police. And he's the commander of the Shanghai district. And so according to his post, uh, Li had died when he was sent to the hospital. And he died at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, not at night. And the Politburo, the, the, the Politburo, uh, the standing committee members, spent 18 hours uh, making decisions on how to treat his death. And they decided that <clears throat> they're not going to change the color, um, the the key color on uh, all the major websites to black and white. And also they are not going to feature his uh, the news about his death, um, Li, Li Keqiang's death, um, as, as the major headline. And... It also, I mean, this post also identified the, this guy as as the man who is the mastermind behind this murder. Okay, well, that's quite sensational. Um, now, today, okay, so now let, let me move on. Today, Nikkei Asia, the same writer who had written a series of reports, three reports about Xi Jinping's um, Xi Jinping meeting some opposition at the Beidaihe summer retreat. Remember, there was a, a, a writer who wrote three pieces separately about how uh, Zhen Qinghong uh, was representing some party elders and confronting Xi Jinping during the summer retreat. Today, he wrote in another piece claiming that Li Keqiang was actually the mastermind behind the Beidaihe confrontation. And it said that, this, this piece said that Li Keqiang did not go to Beidaihe, but Zheng Qinghong's advices to Xi Jinping probably reflected Li's views. Uh, Nikkei Asia also emphasized that Li was seen as Xi's eternal rival according to its sources. And if Xi Jinping has uh, re has retired early due to some unforeseen events, Li Keqiang will take Xi's place because he is still young. The article claimed that Xi has allegedly never let his guard down, a guard down on Li Keqiang. Okay, so <laughs> there are people who you know, uh, don't believe. I mean, Nikkei Asia's previous three articles did not carry much weight um, in in the community of um, the, the China. You know, China, China born or Chinese China experts born in China. Um, they did not believe that the, the artic the articles the articles were full of loopholes, and this one certainly does, in my opinion. And the person who challenged this article is Wang Jintao, a U.S.-based dissident, a friend of Li Keqiang from their college years at Beijing University, and he is also an expert on Chinese politics. So, do I have a picture of him? Here we go. Yeah, this is Wang, Wang Jintao. Uh, he partially disagree with Nikkei Asia's view. Um, now, let me talk about Mr. Wan a little bit. Mr. Wan is a princeling himself. His father was a former PLA senior officer. Um, Wan said uh, that retired high-ranking CCP officials don't have the freedom of getting together without the approval of the top leader. Uh, for, for example, like for Li Keqiang to go to Shanghai for a vacation, he needs approval from, from Xi Jinping. And that's just widely known. And he said when Deng Xiaoping was organizing a coup with another party elder, Yan Jianying, against Madame Mao, they didn't talk at all. They communicated via their children. 
Uh, they use their kids as messengers. So that's that's just shows you, shows you that they can't they don't talk. And he even gave one example. He said um, during one Beidai He summer retreat, two I don't know if you know these guys, but Tian Ji Yun and Hu Qi Li are two high ranking CCP officials. They were walking uh, at Beidai He and they ran into each other. They couldn't. They just sighed. And I don't know, shook hands and then walked away because they could not say anything to each other. So that just shows you how sensitive things are um, among the CCP leaders. So it's unlikely that Li Keqiang was the mastermind behind the Beidai He confrontation because he doesn't fit into that uh, profile. Uh, now, let me tell you a little bit about this Mr. Wan. Okay, he was arrested at age 17 for seven months in 1976 for putting up posters and organizing student protests in Tiananmen, in Beijing, when the former Premier Zhou Enlai died. Um, and he, after uh, China resumed college entrance exams. He took the, the exam and was admitted to Beijing University. And, and that's where Li Keqiang was also studying. So they became friends. Uh, now, this Mr. Wang joined students' movement in 1989, you know, during the um, pro democracy movement. And he was sentenced to 13 years in prison. He was released from prison and allowed, was um, like dispelled. Send a, sent away to the United States in 1994. So he stayed in the prison uh, for a number of years. He didn't serve the entire 13-year term. So this guy is very familiar with um, student movement, student movements and uh, public protest um, to commemorate a, a, um, a deceased uh, CCP leader. So after Li Keqiang died, Mr. Wang gave a number of media interviews to talk about his former friend. Um, and I, I read them or watched them. Now, he didn't directly address the claim that Li was poisoned by the armed police force in, uh, in Shanghai. But he did believe that Mr. Wang did believe that Li Keqiang died of some unnatural causes. So he said he did die of murder, whether directly or indirectly. Um, but he said this, he said Li Keqiang wasn't an ambitious man and didn't even have the ability for political, for like uh, sophisticated political maneuvers. He poses no threat, or he posed no threat to Xi Jinping. But the problem is that people have high hopes in Li Keqiang. People like him and want him to do something for China, and that itself is dangerous for Li Keqiang in the CCP's system. And he said when Li visited the Dunhuang Cave in August, his video went viral, and it shows that his popularity it shows his popularity, and this is certainly upsetting to Xi Jinping. Um, he said that the fact that Li Keqiang wanted to return to Beijing University to teach, he said that's even more dangerous from Xi Jinping's perspective because Beijing University is the birthplace of China's democracy. Um, putting Li among a group of free-spirited students is like, is like putting a matchstick among a, uh, within a stack of dry firewood. So he believes that Li was quote unquote murdered, if not if not direct if not directly at least indirectly. By indirectly he meant um, like Li was has been mentally tormented for all these years because of his personality because he is a he said Li is a kind of an introverted person and just taller you know puts up with people's abuse, and he said he must have. You know, if he died from heart attack, it might have been just from this years of buildup, right? Or, you know, from the lack of um, medical attention after he suffered a heart attack in um, while swimming. So it might be directly or it might be indirectly. So that's, that's his belief. Um, 
although he does not believe he does why he said why he said he partially disagree with Nikkei Asia's claim. He does not believe Li Keqiang was the mastermind behind the summer confrontation at all because he would not, he's not the type of person who would do that. If he has done that, his, politi his political career might be different now. You know, um, so that's, that's just not him at all. But then, um, but his popularity, the fact that he is liked by people is dangerous for him. So, Mr. Wang said he's saddened by the loss of his friend, um, but he knew years ago, he, he said this, he said this on TV, on, on Rock, he said oh, he, sh he should have, because they were all friends. There were like a group of six, six of them. And they, I think five of them have left China and are all very successful in what they do. And Li Keqiang, I think, was the only one of the six who remained in China. I mean, you cannot say he wasn't successful, you know, from 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 CCP's perspective. But but uh, Mr. Wang said that he should have just, you know, joined me in the students' protest and then just quit China. He would be more successful if he, you know, joined me in uh, opposing the CCP. Um, so he he, but he knew that Li Keqiang would become. A victim of the CCP's system at some point, because of his personality, because of his um, scholarly demeanor. Now, the the person who holds the same view as Mr. Wang Wang Jintao is Miles Yu, uh, who is or who was uh, an advisor to former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Uh, Miles Yu was born and raised in China, like myself, and came to the U.S. for education. He was a he was teaching. He was he's a historian on Chinese military. Um, he was uh, he was te he was a professor at a military academy in the U.S. He said in an October thirty first program with the Hudson Institute that Li Keqiang's departure. Is, was more likely to pose a threat to Xi Jinping than when he was in office. Um, he said Li Keqiang does have a loyal following within the Communist Party bureaucracy, and the anti-Xi Jinping faction outside the system is in the shadows. Um, and he said that's why he could pose a, a potential danger to Xi Jinping. I think what he was... I didn't have time to 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 take down exactly what he said this is a paraphrase by somebody so i think what he was saying is um xi jinping is popular and then the anti xi jinping faction is hidden but they're active but the two forces when they join together is deadly to xi jinping and that's why he poses a, and when he was working with Xi Jinping, they see each other, you know, from, from now and from time to time. And Xi Jinping knows what he's up to. But now when he's retired, you don't even know what the guy is up to. So he poses a bigger threat. Um, so I've introduced you the where the murder rumor came from and what people's views are. Um now there's I want to. I must tell you, there's one person who do not, who does not believe that Xi Jinping murdered um, Li Keqiang, and this is a former friend of Xi Jinping, his drinking buddy. Remember, I featured him in one of my programs. So Yuan Hongbing is also a Chinese dissident and uh, expert. He was a law professor at Beijing University. Uh, when Xi Jinping was uh, a low-ranking official in Fujian. Now, he has said in an interview that he absolutely does not believe that Li Xi Jinping murdered or ordered his removal, um, that, that Li was murdered. He said, this is, ir this is it's irresponsible to fabricate such rumors. He find it irresponsible and it's fabricated. He said Xi Jinping has no motive to kill Li, Li Keqiang, who has left the, the top um, leadership or the power circles of Beijing. He said Li has lost his political energy or iner uh, inertia 
and does not post any threat to Xi Jinping. Um, he said Li Keqiang himself. He 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 talk. I he then talk about how does Xi Jinping and his people view Li Keqiang, because that's important. And and I think Mr. Yuan is very insightful on that. He said Li Keqiang is a typical CCP official with a Unix personality. Unix. I, I don't know if I'm am I, if I'm pronouncing the word. Correctly, they are the castrated men who serve the emperor and the entire royal court、um, throughout ancient Chinese history. So he said, Li Keqiang is a typical CCP official with a unique type of personality、um, because Li was Li supported Deng Xiaoping's brutal crackdown on the students in 1989, and was thus recognized and, and appreciated by Deng Xiaoping and Hu Jintao. He also Li Keqiang also followed Jiang Zemin in persecuting the Falun Gong, and Li Keqiang was also responsible for the poverty-stricken villages in Henan, where people got AIDS from selling blood. By using contaminated needles, Li Keqiang was Henan's party secretary at the time. So he said,、um, and so he said that Li is a sad product of the CCP's tyrannical system. But you cannot say、um, that he was a great leader. So according to him,、uh, he said, in the view of Xi Jinping and his gang. Li Keqiang and the faction he belongs to, aka the Hu Jintao faction, is a team of eunuchs who serve them.、Um, and the group, and the, this team of eunuchs, <laughs> is responsible for the rampant corruption that became an epidemic during the Jiang Zemin and Hu Jintao's time. So, the CCP princelings and Xi Jinping's People don't perceive Li Keqiang as someone who deserves to be who deserves to be remembered, and they see him as a de facto deposed official, and that's how Xi Jinping and his ruling team have、uh, have positioned Li Keqiang in their mind. So they're not going to kill someone who they don't even have a lot of. Political respect, who they don't have a lot of respect for. So that's this expert's view. Now let me introduce you to another expert who is a former forensic scientist from China, and his name is Gao Gao Guangjun. Okay, and here's he has he's a lawyer now. He graduated from China's Southwest Institute of Politics and Laws in 1984 with a degree in criminal investigation. And I think that's forensic. Forens we call that forensic science here. And he taught forensic science at the People's Public Security University of China. I think it was China's only university that teaches like criminal investigation or forensic science、um, in China. I think the China's spy chief, what's his name, Chen Wenqing, right? The man that I talked about in my last video. Um, when I talk about the two missing minister mystery, two missing minister mystery, <laughs>、uh, I mentioned the China's spy chief Chen Wenqing. He went to the same school as this guy.、Um, so this man, this lawyer, started. He he started an underground anti CCP organization in 1986. He formed his party. China Democratic Party in 1986, and was active during the 1989 student movement. He was arrested in Beijing in 1991, and in 1993 he fled to Europe and then arrived in the U.S. in 1994. He attended law school and is now practicing law in New York. So, in a recent interview discussing the possibility of Lee's, of Lee's death, he said this,、um, and I want to play two clips for you. Okay, where's clip number one? Two thousand eight years ago. Hold on, let me start from the very beginning, and let me make this bigger. Okay, 
没有高。在二零一八年左右，我记不住具体多少时间，习近平专门在呃成立了一个特别的部门。呃，中央军事委员会行动，那这个局的主要的工作就是，呃，暗杀、绑架。哦，那这个行动局是让中共党内的一些官员为什么胆战心惊心寒的一幕，我们在二十大看得非常清楚。李克强连看一眼胡锦涛的这个胆量、勇气都没有。对，而且是他多年培养的这个这个呃亲信。到了这种地步，所以这是习近平蓄意要创造的一种气氛，让你所有的人都感觉到这个害怕。对，那就算是在外面离奇死的人，大概有好几十个中共的干部高干子弟，那我相信都跟这个行动局有关系。嗯，所以今天李克强的也死，我们也联想到这个部门到底，如果要让呃中共做一个交代的话，我们觉得我们应该。特别的关注这个部门到底做了些什么东西。Okay, I just want to remind you of this picture. Remember, this is the picture when Hu Jintao was removed from the stage at the、uh, party's twentieth party congress. He patted, put put his hands on Li Keqiang's back, and Li did not say anything.、Uh, did not stood up, or you know,、uh, he just. You know, sat there, and then look at Wang Yang. Wang Yang looked straight ahead and did not even turn his head.、Um, and that's what he was. That's what Mr. Gao was referring to. That people are so scared.、Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's precisely the scene that he was、um, he was、uh, referring to. So、uh, Mr. Gao said、uh, he talked he talked a little bit about. <clears throat> this agency or this bureau, he said,、um, she Xi Jinping selected individuals with ordinary background, like people from、uh, blue collar or peasant families.、Um, he did not select young young men, people from who from a privileged families. You know, people who whose parents are high、uh, government officials or who. Who are wealthy? You know, he he avoided those people. He particularly select people who came from、uh, a very ordinary family. Now, these people are specially trained and are given a lot of authorities, and they are very well compensated, such as they have、um, medical insurance, very good medical insurance for life, and even their whole family have medical insurance for life. And if if something happens to them, if they're injured or crippled,、um, the country will take care of them for the rest of their life. And not only that, they you know they have a lot of privileges where they go. They can fly, or take transportations at any time to anywhere, stuff like that.、Um, and and he said the basic responsibility of the bureau is assassination and kidnap. Uh, and then he went on to elaborate a little bit more about,、um, you know, what what Xi Jinping is doing with this organization. So let me play clip number two. 我得用刀把子 Okay, hold on. Let me start from the beginning. 呃、uh, ，习近平越来越多的用刀把子这个。特务情报机构来治理这个国家，那李克强这个死就让很多包括中共的一些干部在里面感到很心惊、很胆战。另外一个方面呢，我们也看到过，自习近平执政以来，中共的干部突然死亡的比例是最高的一段时间，包括那些呃一些企业家啦、知名的这些人士突然死亡的比例。啊、呃，比过去啊、呃，邓小平年代，呃，温湖时代不知道高多少。对。然后我们最典型的，我们也看到，说举个例子，就是前财政部长金正庆，突然在阳台上就说自己被烧死了，这个简直是天方夜谭。凡是有一点基本常识的人都不会相信，说一个人可以在阳台上把自己点火给烧死掉，周围什么都没有。这个，所以这样的一个呃发展的一个趋势，就表明了习近平。
就想用秦制治国，用这个呃苏联的克格勃的这个手段来治理这个国家，用高压恐怖的手段治理国家。OK， 嗯、um, ，So I I have been quite comprehensive in presenting you different views regarding the question if Li Keqiang was murdered. I don't think we'll get an answer, a factual answer to that question, in the near future.、Uh, we might never know the truth. But the but Li's death left so much fear on everyone. Xi Jinping feared that another major movement against him would break out. That's why he's, you know, censoring his, you know, his the whole country. Was on high alert. The security and police was on high alert today when,、uh, when they when they cremate Li's body, right? So that shows his fear, and then his officials fear that they're in greater danger after seeing a harmless Li Keqiang having ended so tragically, right? They were they're thinking, well, what's going to happen to me? The Chinese public feared. Or fear about their future because if the second highest ranking person in their country had no hope, they have absolutely no hope. And people have been saying that they have cried a lot, not not for Li Keqiang but for themselves because they feel hope they feel hopeless.、Um, so today, Li Keqiang was cremated at the cemetery reserved for Xi, CCP leaders. The event was highly guarded while Xi Jinping and his wife attended the wake.、Um, here's here are the pictures, and the other six members of the Politburo Standing Committee was also there. Now Li Keqiang was a member of the seventeenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth Politburo Standing Committee, and. All the members of the three committees, or most of the members of the three committees, are living, but they didn't attend the wake.、Um, at least the news didn't say they were there. I think Xi Jinping didn't allow them to go. Hu, Hu Jintao, who has been rumored to be dying, sent a floral wreath, but it doesn't mean that he sent it himself. It could be his family or his. Assistant、uh, sent it on his behalf, but he was—he's rumored to be、um, dying、um, in a hospital. So the entire nation was under high security alert. Certain sections of the subways were closed to prevent people from gathering. Foreign journalists were monitored.、Um, although, oh, actually, here's the pic—I want to show you this picture. This is. This is the picture showing Xi Jinping、um, shaking hand with Li Keqiang's wife,、uh, with his wife looking on. And if you watch the video, I watched the video. This is just a picture. If you watch the video, the handshake was quite superficial. People say, although you can't see Chen Hong,、um, uh, Mrs. Li Keqiang, his her face, but you could see that she did not look at Xi Jinping in the eyes. Uh, it was. It was. People commented on that, and I think that was true. So here's, here's, um, here's a a previous picture, and this man is the man on the right. This was at her home when Li Keqiang's、uh, former colleagues came to pay tribute, and、uh, and people commented how sad she looked and how her hair turned white overnight. Um, she just looked so sad in in this picture, but that was taken from 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 home, and this you know the, this was obviously taken by a CCP I mean official journalist, and they gave the the angle to Xi Jinping and not to to the wife. So,、uh, but if you watch the video, they're they're online. You can watch them.、Um, it does it you know she did not look at him in the eyes, so. Yeah, and and here's the floral、uh, wreath、uh, with Hu Jintao's name on the far left, and see all all the the the, the big shots like Zhu Rongji, the the pre, previous premier Zhu Rongji, Wen Jiabao, 
uh, Li Ruihuan. These are all Politburo Standing Committee members. These are all CCP heavyweights. They didn't even bother to have separate uh, flower wreath for them. They like they joined their names in this one wreath. I mean, the only person uh, in, that they separate out of a, a, a wreath was Hu Jintao. And they put all, they grouped all the names together in the other, um, in, in this, in, 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 in decorating this, this hall. So um, that just shows that they don't want to show a very elaborate floral arrangement or they want to cut down the, uh, the attention that, she, uh, that Li Keqiang was receiving. And so, yeah, and then although Xinhua News Agency announced that all government agencies uh, will lower the flag uh, for, the, for the day, many organizations did not do that. For example, uh, the Ministry of Public Security did not lower its flag. And most unbelievable was Li's alma mater, um, Beijing University did not lower its flag. <laughs> I think that's just out, quite outrageous. And um, guess who? And then no, no website, no web, Chinese website changed its color from uh, from full color to black and white because that's uh, a Chinese tradition. When somebody important in the country passed away, they would change the website or something like newspaper to black and white, right? Uh, as mourning, as the that's the color of mourning. They did not do that. The only website, guess which what, whose website changed the color to black and white? You wouldn't believe. An American company, Starbucks. Starbucks changed its website to black and white in China uh, uh, for on November 2nd uh, for, for Li Keqiang. So I think it was a very touching gesture because Chinese noticed that. Chinese people noticed that. And then they just, that make them really think differently about American uh, Americans because Starbucks is an American brand. Um, a dinosaur park that had announced closing the park for a day to mourn the, the premiere. Here, here you have this uh, on the left. It was a very... It's a public notice with a candle with a very well written message uh, to mourn the, the passing of the premier and to announce the closing of the park for a day. But shortly, it sent it posted a notice on its uh, social media account saying that, oh no, we're open now. So people commented that it's probably an, under pressure not to close the park. To uh, to remember Li Keqiang. I mean, all these things you could tell um, Xi Jinping is doing, you know, or his people. I, I shouldn't say him personally, but his people are trying to do everything they can to minimize the impact of Li's death, and trying they're trying to get people forget um, forget about his passing, and um, that's that's what we that, that's what we have seen. All right, so if you ask me of my opinion, what, what I think of um, whether or not Lee was murdered, um, you know, I used to hold the view of, I, I, I hold the same view as Yuan Hongbin. I don't find Xi Jinping has the incentive or the motive to, 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 to have him killed. Like, why? I mean, it's going to cause him more trouble than benefits, you know, if he really doesn't like the guy, he can, I mean, he can easily make him disappear from public eye, you know, he could put him under investigation, he could put him, you know, under house arrest, you know, forbid him to go anywhere, forbid him to interact or communicate with anyone. I mean, there's just so many means he could do to limit this man's influence. And, and Li Keqiang is, you know, I, is not his personality is is not like one of those people who would like challenge him so much. So he doesn't have to murder him. He just have to, you know, he could, he could do so many things to really limit this guy's ability to to do anything, right? Or he could even throw him into prison or say, "Oh, he's now under investigation and make him disappear like the two ministers." So I I don't believe, or I didn't believe that, I really didn't believe that he was murdered. However, 
with everything that I presented, with everything that I've read and watched and, and followed in the past couple of days, um, with so much, so many people saying that, oh no, you know, um, I can say that I'm convinced that he died of some very unnatural causes. He did not die just. He didn't. He he did not die from heart attack just like that. Um, there was a deliberate. There was a deliberate effort uh, to make him disappear, shall we say? So um, that's. I think that's that. That's pretty certain. Um, but it's still very hard. I can't, you know, I, I still don't have an opinion about whether or not he was murdered. That's why I presented all the different views. Um, even though a lot of the people did not say, like uh, his friend, Li Keqiang's friend, Wang Junta, uh, he did not say, as a matter of fact, to say, yep, he's murdered. No, he didn't say that, but he said he is murdered, you know, but the word murdered is is in quote, and it has many different shades of meaning. Um, so that's what I want to say. And you can judge for yourself, you know, what, what you think really happened. Okay. Uh, can we have a, a survey here? How do we start a survey? Sorry. Um, I don't know if Chris, you're here. Uh, how do we start a survey? Maybe I'll do a survey. <laughs> oh, this is late. I'm te technically challenged. Um, that's a great idea, Jeff. I just don't know how to do that. I'll find out how to do that. Um, All right, from from Skunk's Riot, like of all of all what happened under She's watch after he steps after uh, he stepped down, him, his wife and daughter, what would be their future in the hands of CCP, nor democratic China? It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Um, I read somewhere that Xi Jinping's daughter is not talking to him. Because she worries that, because she knows how many people oppo oppose his father, oppose her father, so she tried to tell her dad to not not to be so, um, you know, not be a hardcore leftist. You know, give people some freedom, or you know, at least be gentle on some of his policies. I think she's trying to soften him a little bit. You know. But he told his daughter, no, 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 you don't understand Chinese politics. You know, this is Chinese politics. Um, the Chinese have been like this for thousands of years. But I think Mr. Xi was wrong. In the ancient time, you know, the politics, politics have always, has always existed throughout the East or the West. But they don't, but they have the basic respect for, um, for the heaven, for the people. I mean, even the emperor, Chongzhen emperor, who uh, whose biography was ordered to be removed from bookstores because his his personality and his style of governing is so similar to Xi Jinping. Even that guy um, pledged to the heaven and 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 asked forgiveness from the heaven when he was not doing well. Has Xi Jinping ever done that? Um, and even that emperor, I mean, that emperor is so similar to Xi Jinping. At the very end, when before he committed suicide, um, he he told his opponent, I mean, his the the the, the rebels, right? He said to them, you know, do not harm my people. Like if you must harm someone, you know, harm me, but do not harm my people because they're innocent, something to that effect. I mean, you can tell he's still a good emperor because he loves his people. He does not want his people to be harmed, even though everything he did was a disaster and he eventually committed suicide. Um, but still, you see, there's a difference. Even so, even people say, you know, Xi Jinping is so similar to Chongzheng, the emperor Chongzheng, but still, 
they cannot be compared. Those emperors still have, you know, basic human decency because there's, it's, it's not communism. You know, I mean, yes, there are politics. The, the politics are ugly, but they respect the heaven. They love their people. Uh, it's not something, you know, CCP is like, I have never seen any any government, any, anything like it. Um, it's just unbelievable. So uh, back to your question. Yeah, so the daughter, the daughter told the father, um, you know, that he should, be a little gentle. <laughs> and the father said, no, you know, you don't understand Chinese politics. And so the daughter does not talk to him. The daughter does not talk to him. Yeah. Um, from Shan Shana Sh Shantanu, Shantanu Sub Suhaj. Do you see any connection between Li Shangfu and CIA in terms of cooperation and that led to his sacking? It's possible. It's possible he's connected to the rocket force and then the entire rocket force's leadership is sacked. And then I think the, the rocket force, see the rocket force leadership are technocrats. These are technical people. They are well-educated group of technocrats. They, they are engineers, right? So they were, they were trained engineers. And so they are well-educated. They understand the West much better than other CCP leaders or PLA um, officers. And they, a lot of their children are studying in the West. So not only they have probably a positive opinion of the West, and a lot of their Many of them have children, you know, living, studying in the West. So I'm not surprised if, you know, I mean, that that itself is a problem from Xi Jinping's perspective. <laughs> you know, they're very pro-West. So that could get Xi Jinping suspicious of what they have been up to. So it's possible. All right. Vern Doiker, like, do you think it's possible she may have had his subordinates do this because he likes chaos to be happening and wants people to buckle down and prepare to suffer as part of his ultimate E something? Um, so remember the survey um, at the beginning, right? The survey is, let me let me show you the survey. It's what... The, the four scenarios, right? The last one is he died, uh, died from heart attack and then was not given the proper emergency care. But the first one is Xi Jinping, you know, murdered him. And the second one is somebody at the top. That one is somebody working for Xi Jinping uh, without Xi Jinping's approval or, or knowledge, wanted to do this to please the big boss, thinking that if they do this, they could get rid of more opposition for Xi, and they might have orchestrated this. And this is likely. And that slides, let me see what's the percentage of that. That has a pretty high percentage. Let me let me show you that slide. I'm I'm curious myself. Uh that was my one of my earlier oh here we go. So that one by someone at the top is 12% ranking third, right? The 12% people believe that. Um and then 7.7% .7 believe that Xi Jinping's political opponent have done it, uh, has done it. So yeah, to answer your question, it's it's a likely. Um, it's, it's likely. But if you say Xi Jinping ordered someone to do it, then that would fall under the first, excuse me, first per, uh, percentage. Then that would, he would be responsible for that. Didn't Xi's daughter study at Harvard? Yes, she did. Um, all right, let me see. Okay. All right, let me see. Um, is that all? Who was she's mentor? That's a good question. Informer, who was she's mentor? He had no mentor. He had no mentor. But as a princeling, they don't, you know, typically princelings don't have a mentor because their birth birth status gave them the prestige. Usually it's the technocrats 
um, like Hu Jintao, uh, Li Keqiang, Wang Yang, even Jiang Zemin was a technocrat because Jiang Zemin, uh, Jiang Zemin's mentor was Deng Xiaoping, uh, or, or Chen Yun, right? So, because Jiang Zemin was not, it was not a princeling. So they all had to have someone, you know, supporting them. But if you're a princeling and you're generally liked and accepted, you don't need a mentor. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's all. And I'll end it here. I thank you for joining me and I'll see you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye.